Hey everyone, welcome back to the NPTE podcast. This is Will Crane, your host. Thank you so much for joining me as we go through the content you need in order to dominate on test day. So today we have a practice question related to the non-systems. So as you recall, the non-systems contain somewhere around 10 to 15% of the total exam items. So somewhere around 25 to 30 questions on exam day will be related to the non-systems. Now this does cover a variety of topics from equipment devices, technology, therapeutic modalities, safety and protection, professional responsibilities, and research and evidence-based practice. All of these are included in the non-systems on exam day. So today we'll be talking through the equipment and devices section on the exam. This is a section primarily dedicated to, as you would guess it, equipment and devices. So we're talking about assistive devices, talking about orthotics, prosthetics. These are the items that we deal with on a regular basis as a part of our practice as a PT. So before I get to that practice question though, just a quick reminder, we will be starting up our crash course the first week of July, heading in for the July exam date. Our crash course is the most economical, quick way to review the big systems on exam day. So if you're looking for just a quick review, of the musculoskeletal, neuromuscular, and cardiovascular systems, you'll really enjoy our crash course. So the crash course really is meant to be a quick review of a, a multitude of items that are likely to be tested in those big three systems. Now, this the crash course comes as a complimentary part of your VIP access if you're a VIP member. If you wanna purchase the crash course, you can also get a sweet discount. Just email us over at ptfinalexam.com slash contact. And you can find, if you've got a group of five or more, you can get access to the crash course for a very significant discount. So the crash course really is meant to be a quick review of the big three systems. We have one live session each week where we go through practice questions, really talk through questions, help you to see what is likely to be on the test. In addition to that, we have a video library. It's a, an abbreviated video library of the big three systems to help you get through that content. Plus there are some sweet little perks. If you are a part of the crash course, you can get discounted access to our practice exams as well as some of our, our other systems modules. I think you'll want to join it. It's something that is, has helped many, many hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of students prepare for and pass the NPTE. Definitely one worth checking, checking out. Again, this is something that is our, our quickest, most economical way to prepare in those last few weeks before exam day. It's not cramming, it's the crash course. <laughs> so we help you get the content you need so that you can get the score you deserve on test day. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into our question. So as per our usual, I will read to you the question, give you a moment to respond, and then we'll talk about the answer together. Those of you watching the video version of this, be sure to check it out over on YouTube. And those of you on the road, just uh, remember, keep your eyes on the road. Those of you running, also keep your eyes on the road. And yeah, I'll talk you through this one. Here we go. Which of the following angles of tilt is the minimum required in a manual wheelchair tilt system to redis redistribute pressure away from the pelvis. So which of the following angles of tilt is the minimum required in a manual wheelchair tilt system to redistribute pressure away from the pelvis? The answer options are 15 degrees, 25 degrees, 35 degrees, and 45 degrees. So again, which of the following angles of tilt is the minimum required in a manual wheelchair tilt system to redistribute pressure away from the pelvis. 15, 25, 35, or 45. So this is a type of question that can be quite frustrating when you observe that the items are all, they're all mutually exclusive, that it is a, what is the minimum angle required? 15, 25, 35, 45. And so then the question then comes back, okay, in order to redistribute pressure away from the pelvis, in a wheelchair, what do you have to do? Well, the minimum angle required is 45 degrees of tilt. So this is often in the case of like a tilt in space chair, uh, very often used in the case of severe weakness, pediatric illness, anytime a patient is unable to shift themselves or, or pressure offload themselves, there has to be some type of system in place to do that, whether that's from a caregiver or they're able to do it from some type of mechanical assist. But in, in principle here, in order to get the pressure off of the ischial tuberosities and the sacrum, you have to tilt them back or recline them sufficiently in order to move the pressure from their sacrum, from their butt and sacrum, onto their low back. And really, if you tilt all the way back, then they're in the supine position. But the idea here is in order to minimize pressure injuries, uh, these folks that require a tilt system, you have to be tilted at least 45 degrees or more in order to offload the pelvis. 
So the key here is you have to tilt at least 45 degrees or more in order to offload the pelvis. Uh, again, this type of wheelchair is extremely helpful in the case of a caregiver for, say, a child with some type of pediatric developmental delay or, or some condition where it precludes the patient from moving or being mobile themselves. Uh, again, the case of severe weakness, uh, paralysis, severe fatigue of the head, neck, trunk, all these things could result in the in in the risk of pressure injuries, and so therefore you would require the use of some type of system. So uh, again, this is a type of wheelchair. It's called a tilt-in space or a manual wheelchair with a tilt system. Uh, again, there are a lot of different varieties of this. They can be mechanical, they can be electronic, but this is a, a tilt system type chair. All right, so quick little question for you, but again, on test day, you can expect only a handful of questions related to equipment and devices, somewhere around five questions. Uh, this does cover, this is a part of the non-systems. And as you recall, as we go through this podcast, we go through each of the systems on the exam and circle back through each time. So with that, with that, we'll go ahead and bring today to a conclusion. Thank you so much for what you do. Thank you for the efforts you put into study. And I hope that, that you find that this is a good intersection of your interest and your skill, that as you work through the content, that you recognize this is something that not only are you good at, but you're actually interested in this material. So we'll bring it to a conclusion. We'll crane fist pumps all around, and I'll catch you in the next episode. Thanks.